So you just saw it. I just finished the new dance. The new dance. Yeah, so this is, um, I believe, Crocheted Shawl Project number five. I have done four of them, and all the ones that I've done so far, I've gifted out. So this one here is actually one that I've done for myself. And um, Mom, I want to point this out to you. You got that green one, right, for Mother's Day and her birthday? This is what I meant when I said you have a hidden a hidden seam pocket. So if you, uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, what you can do is just pull the opposite end. It's going to be hidden. You're not going to see it there. I can't back up enough to really give you an example. Of, well, maybe I can. There we go, tippy toes. But anyway, when you pull it through, that's what it will look like. So anyway, mom, side note for you. But this is the first one that I've done for myself. I've been doing a lot of crocheted uh, shawls now. Yeah, obviously, I just said I did five. That's, you know, whatever. Because I've been doing so many shawls, I'm ready for a change of pace. I really do enjoy the quick turnover that I can pull out fresh yarns and I can start new projects. And you see a really quick... Uh, you see a really quick completion, which really nurtures my needs because, you know, long projects typically don't hold my attention span and I walk away from things like that. But because I've done so many short-term projects right now, what I'm going to do is a, uh, I'm crocheting a blanket for my bed. It's going to be somewhat comforter size. It's going to be large. I want something that I can just keep next to the rocking chair yeah, I got a rocking chair. And actually, it's the one that I rocked my babies and when they were born. So I tend to be real sentimental about that. Yeah, I don't know why my voice got high, but it did. So anyway, but when I'm waking up and I'm having those rough nights of sleep, it's I, I want just a nice steady project that I can work on where I don't have to think about what the pattern is and all of that or, where, or count stitches. I can just, you know, relax with my cup of green tea, honey, and lemon, you know? But uh, let me show you, though, the yarn that I'm using and the pattern that I'm doing. So this is the new crochet blanket that I'm working on for my bed. It, but when it's done, it will be a queen size in total. I have been drawn to green lately. I have no explanation for it. Every time I go to the store, I just have to buy green fabric. This was the pro this was a project I made for my mom. Look, I mean, it's almost the same color. It's crazy, you know? And I thought, you know, these is a different project to work on someday. Look, they're still green. I just can't shake it right now. I have to keep working with it, I guess. It's my calling. But anyhow, this um, is going to be the crosshatch pattern here. Uh, you might be familiar with this before I had done... Uh, that rainbow ombre quilt. You know what? Why don't I just show it to you? I did the rainbow ombre quilt in the crosshatch pattern as well. So let's take a quick look at that just to remind you. Remember this guy? Remember this beautiful blanket here? Yeah, this is the crosshatch. It's exactly the same as the other one that I'm working on. The difference is um, this is double-stranded also, but the strands are a little uh, thinner, less thick than the ones that I'm currently using. So what's really cool about it is this, it, because this has got a lighter weight to it, it's a lovely summertime blanket. So when the air conditioning is kicking on really strong like that, that's the blanket you want. But this one here is a double strand. Yeah, I have the two of these set up and I'm pulling, you know, two at a time here. And you can see just by looking at it how much thicker it is. And it's creating all of this kind of a bubble effect. Every shell, it's our shell, crosshatch, whatever you want to call it. You know, I just, it's just such a beautiful pattern. This is the perfect mindless one that you can just relax to as you watch, you know, I don't know, jewelry television or something like that, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm learning how to refinish furniture. I don't know what you guys watch at night. Maybe you're watching Fresh Prince reruns, whatever. Or, 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 or. <laughs> anyway, I'm just, this is my latest project. This is a long-term project or so, to, or may not be, depending on how many early nights I have, right? I will uh, put the pattern down in my description box for you. So I thought I'd show you uh, the, 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 
this is a, a close-up of the shawl that I just finished. As you saw, this is a triangle shawl also here. It consists of double crochets, triple crochets, triple crochet with a space in between. So that gives you a little bit of the open, the open work in through here. What I did different in my pattern, I customized it a bit, was I crocheted through the whole post here on a, a random rows so that instead of just on your top post here i went through the whole post and by doing so that's when you get this ridge here and i really like dropping that in there because it adds an element of detail and it kind of takes it up a notch from beginner without really having to do anything special for it the yarn that i used was this big twist carousel i believe that i got this at michael's so i don't remember you know, I don't think it was Joann's or Walmart's, so I'm really leaning towards Michael's here. So anyway, yeah, this falls in the green family like all the other ones I've been working on. But I think it turned out beautiful the way the colors all blend together. I think you guys might too. Let me know what you think. Uh, if I save the pattern, I will link it in the description box below. This was a YouTube pattern that I customized a little bit. So the link I leave for you is going to be a lot simpler Maybe not a lot simpler. Slightly different is maybe a better way to phrase it, but it's basically the same thing. Good morning, guys. We got a brisk morning here in Tennessee for the end of May. It was 53 degrees when I looked at the temps this morning. But I wanted to close out my video today to show you how the garden is looking. Uh, it's at a point now where I'm seeing changes almost daily. So let's do a quick review. Oh, look at how full it is. I wanted to get out, get out here early this morning before, uh, oh, I see a cat. Do you see the kitty over there? Do you see him hiding over by the roses? Hi, kitty. Meow. I don't know who that guy is. Anyway, uh, distracted. Wildlife distraction. <laughs> Uh, but I wanted to get out here early before the sun got too high in the sky. And that way, you guys, all the colors will look more vibrant. So let's begin here with our hostas. It's beautiful to see these guys in bloom. Look how pretty. And this is one of the cone, ombre cone flowers. This guy came into bloom this week. Look how pretty. Look at the color on that. And I like when they're just opening and you see all the hints of colors just starting to pop out. Look at that though, how pretty. And look at that, we did got a black eyed Susan. That's our first one, yay. See, and this is the, I got a few different varieties here. This one is different than these. I don't know which is which, but obviously it's a smaller one. So I'm curious to see <laughs> if I have to move that because the autumn joys are quite large in front of it so anyway still getting some blooms on the salvias starting to get a little bit thicker so that's after two weeks of a hard cut back so. this guy got really droopy in, a th in uh, some heavy storms we had oh look we're getting a new bloom on that new plant too Oh, how nice, nice. We see a black-eyed Susan getting ready there. And look at this, look at this, guys. The autumn joy is turning pink. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to contain my excitement. It is early. <laughs> my neighbors are probably in the house still sleeping. But here we go, this guy's, uh, whoa, maybe a day or two from opening up. Look at that, look at these. These are the ombres. I've got like three different varieties of them. Look at how there's that deep dark, the deep dark red inside the center there. Ah, oh, just stunning, just stunning. Oh, I'm such a happy gardener right now. And these hostas here, they're all blooming as well. Look at the, <laughs> look at the daylilies. This is hilarious to me. <laughs> look how tall this guy is. All right, hold on a second. I'm gonna give you perspective. I'm gonna stand next to it. It's, look, it's, it's almost my shoulder height. Oops. All right, and that's the Purple Heart. It's taken a beating. We've had a lot of heavy storms, but he's still growing strong here. Still a lot of new growth in there. Uh, that not started to bloom yet though. But oh, let's look at the broken leaves from all the heavy rain we've had. No, it happens. What are you gonna do? 
Um, and I think lastly is the one little uh, lavender plant that I have here. The one that I keep talking about tucking over here. And I have look a little baby Autumn Joy, so I'm going to move that over there so he can be with his friends. Uh, the cat ran away. The roses are starting to die back here. But they're still pretty though, aren't they? Just a nice touch of color. Yeah, I'm going to be out here shaping that thing one of these days. But anyway, here's a slow zoom on how beautiful it's turning out. Have a good day. Thanks for watching, guys.